Gia here from Gypsy Fae Creations. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today's soap making video is a bit of a milestone video. On June 4th of 2017, I uploaded my first ever YouTube video on soap making. I'm having a hard time figuring out where the past two years have gone. It's crazy how much time flies. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a giveaway to thank you all for following me on this journey in learning and soap making and my adventures and all the crazy creations that I make on here. So stay tuned to the end of the video because there's going to be a giveaway and you can figure out what you're going to win or what you could win and how to win. But for now, let's get soap making. I am going to be doing a gumball machine themed soap. I think a subscriber had thrown this my way because I like doing those PVC pipe embeds and I was like, what else is in that shape? And someone said gumball machine, so call me crazy. It didn't exactly turn out how I wanted it to, but you get the point. So let's get started and I'll show you how I made this crazy gumball machine soap. Alright, to start off, I have lined my PVC pipes. I've put my test cap and my little adapter on the bottom there so they're ready to go. And I'm going to mix up the first part of this soap, which is going to be like the gumball machine globe with the little gumballs inside of it. So I'm going to go ahead and mix in my lye solution. My, tit my titanium dioxide is also in there as well because I want to make it a white colored globe. I also have my coconut clay and kaolin into my oils here, so let's give that a whirl. next part is filling these guys and then I have all of these different colored soap dough canes that I made using this tool here. It is called a extr extruder tool. So a lot of uh, time and effort went into making all of these and I'm not going to fill this gumball machine all the way up. It's going to be like halfway full since I'm making two loaves of it. So I'm going to pour a little bit of the white into here and then start putting those individual gumballs in this. So I'm going to pour a little bit in so that it sets up and that those gumballs have, like those gumball canes, <laughs> have something to grab onto. So I'll fill them up hmm, almost halfway. Let that sit for hmm, a couple minutes and then I'll come back, put those gumballs in there and then fill up the rest of this. All right, let's see if I can get some of these guys to stand up in here. I'm gonna go for just putting them on one side. And I've also made them a li little bit longer than the PVC pipe so that I can get a good grasp on them. I will have to leave a little video of me making these so you guys can see how it's done. But I'm just going to be here a while filling this up, so we'll have to speed this part up. I'm also not scenting the base of this, just because the fragrance I chose has vanillin in it. Actually, it doesn't have any vanillin in it, but it does discolor. It says it discolors to like a yellow, and I don't want that. So I am not putting any color in this, but I will go ahead and put color into our color. Gosh, Tierra. Scent. Fragrance. Get with it. I'm not putting any fragrance into this. I'm going to put it into the rest of the soap. That's not supposed to be white. That's the plan. So let's just speed this part up. Okay, so they're all in there. Once this is hardened up, I will cut those 
and trim them down a little bit, but I just wanted to make sure that I can get them all in there. I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the rest of my soap batter. Of course, I've gotta make a mess while I do it. And then I'm going to let these sit overnight and then I'll come back, we'll unmold them and work some with some more soap dough and put them inside of the soap base. So that's the first part. And I'm going for that when I cut into this, you're just gonna see those little round circle shapes that are gonna look like gumballs. So I wanted to show you how easy this is to get out of this PVC pipe. So I've taken off that adapter. This is what the side of it looks like. So I did trim up those little soap ends. And now it's just a matter of getting it out of the tube. So if you hold on to this test cap, which is my dominant hand here, I swear it's easy. We are going to Pry that out a little bit, there we go. And then just pull. Right out of there. <laughs> it didn't look that easy, but trust me, it is a lot easier than it used to be. And then we'll just take off the parchment paper. And there's that. That just pulls right off of there and we are good to go to make the rest of the soap. So let's get the base together, the soap dough together and get this into our bubblegum soap. So now that we have the embeds made, the little gumball machines, it is time to make up the base of the soap. And I'm going to be coloring it with this mall vine color from Soapbox Micas. I wanted to stick with like bubblegum looking colors from the blues to the purples and the pinks. So that's what the rest of the soap is going to be colored with. And the whole entire base is going to be purple. So I'm just going to go ahead and color that and mix that in and then I'm going to pour in my lye solution. Okay, so I went ahead and mixed in my fragrance, which I chose a Galactic Grape by Crafter's Choice. It does discolor to a yellow, but I hope that the titanium dioxide and the purple that I've mixed in there will help. And I'm gonna start by pouring it a little layer of it into these molds. I also mixed in a little bit of bubblegum FO or fragrance oil. I say FO as like everyone knows what I'm talking about. Fragrance oil <laughs> into here because out of the bottle, I thought it smelled very much like a bubblicious grape bubblegum. But once I got into the soap, I was kind of disappointed in the fact that it smelled like grape cough syrup. So I put in a little bit of bubblegum fragrance in there just to bring that out a little bit and it definitely mellows it out and you know, add a little more bubblegum to it because that's what it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna let that set for a couple minutes and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my gumball embeds in there. Tell you what, even after two years of doing this, well, over two years of doing this, I still surprise myself with messing up. So one of my worries is that when I get that embed in there, it's just gonna slip and it's going to be crooked. So hopefully I fixed it because that is not how I wanted it to go. But I'm gonna go ahead and cover that all up and let it sit so that I can go get my icing together and I'm going to put some blue icing on there and some little pink gumballs <laughs> and hopefully cross my fingers that this turns out. This one was a little more tricky than any of the other um, PVC type embeds that I've made in my opinion. It was a little bit of a struggle but hopefully it turns out looking like, I don't know, a gumball machine maybe? 
<laughs> Alright, I'm going to give these a little tap just to make sure everything is filled in and I will go get my icing together and hope there are no more surprises, except good surprises. Okay, so let's put the piping on here. This is very reminiscent of a soap that I did in August 2017. I did my first bubblegum soap and I almost forgot all about it. I used like vanilla color stabilizer and titanium dioxide and I got lots of glycerin rivers for the first time. So I think considering I've been soaping for two years and I'm doing another bubblegum soap now that has like gumball machines inside of it, I've come a long way. <laughs> I've learned a lot and I'm continually, continued, continually being surprised by soap and my skills at it being a soap maker. I just have so much fun doing it and I'm going to continue doing it because I just have so much fun doing it and I'm, it's like my creative outlet and de-stressing and now it's my full-time job. So <laughs> this is what I do. But again, I feel like I've learned so much doing this. One of my favorite techniques is the PVC mold that I have now conquered and mastered and I, love creating ideas and getting them from you guys about like what different shapes I should want. Well, it's a circle, but you know what I mean. What I can turn it into, that, that embed for the PVC. So if you got any more, hit me. I am down to try it. So I'll go ahead and refill my icing bag. So I know I, I recently did a video that a cardinal had landed outside of my window as I was soaping and I've been paying a lot of attention now that I'm home about what's going on outside and in the yard and in my garden now that I have more time to spend out there and I've noticed lots of cardinals mostly a couple so it's probably not a lot of them it's just like the same couple that's been flying around in our yard it's like a male and a female and you can always tell because the male's really really red and the females are brown with a little bit of red and they're just the cutest little couple because they've been just cheap cheeping all over the place in my backyard and so i've just been following and i'm like that is really weird that all of these cardinals are hanging out in my yard lately all right i'm going to be putting on some of these little gumball shaped gumballs <laughs> soapy gumballs that i've colored to look like gumballs so but yeah, they've been hanging out my yard and I thought it was really weird that they've been in our yard a lot because I've never seen cardinals as much as I have lately. And I've been telling Brad about them, that they've been hanging out. It's been really cool that they like our yard. But I was out front one day doing some yard work and the female flew out of the bush in the front and I thought that was that was odd. what are you doing in there and then the male was flying around the bush and I'm like I don't see anything in there I don't see a nest or anything so I don't know what that's all about but they kept like trying to get to this bush and I'm like crap I, I really think this is their home and they're like trying to get into this bush and I'm hanging around their nest and so I, I went around the bush and I looked again and lo and behold, there was a little nest in there and it had two little babies. So I'm so happy that I've got these cardinals hanging out and they chose my bush, my little, my little boxwood bush in the front yard to hang out in. There are so many birds in our neighborhood. I mean, you know, your typical house finches and like the yellow ones and ones with like red heads and we've got crows and... We've got bluebirds that hang out front. There's just so many birds in our, it's weird. I don't know. It's a weird place to have all these birds in my opinion. All right, <laughs> so I just sprinkled on some confetti, shimmer confetti sprinkles, and then I'm gonna put some glitter on here. This is Twinkle Rose Gold Glitter that I got from Crafter's Choice. I finally figured out what was in the shaker because <laughs> every time I go to use it, I'm like, eh, it's glitter. I don't remember which one it is, but it is twinkle rose gold glitter if you guys are interested it is an eco-friendly glitter all right i'm gonna give this a spray with rubbing alcohol and i'm gonna let it sit for 24 hours and we'll come back and cut it and hopefully there is a gumball machine in there all right y'all wish me luck i'm going in to see if i got that gumball machine i was going for if anything i love the colors i love the top of this soap and at least it has that going for it so, a little funky, okay. 
that little bottom part didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to. But I think you get the idea. Maybe I should have made it a little bit bigger. And that is perfectly fine. Still love it. That gumball, like the gumballs in there, the actual PVC pipe I think turned out really, really adorable. So you can see the design I was going for at least. Tried to loosen up the arm on my cutter here and I got a tool to go do it. And I'm afraid I'm going to break something or strip the nut on it or something. So I'm going to get Bradley to do that. I'm just going to deal with it for now. So it is what it is. It still works. I love that purple and I love that blue and the little gumballs on top and the little gumball machine. It turned out really, really nice. Turn it around because, you know, I'm pro at lining things up not. Alright, try this end. So stay tuned at the end of this video because I'm going to be showing you what I am giving away and you could possibly win it if you are interested and I will leave the instructions on how to enter below as well so if you guys are interested in making your own soap or experimenting I have a little kit that I put together with some of my favorite companies and ingredients in it. So stay tuned to the end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can leave me a thumbs up. Questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. If you are new, feel free to subscribe. It's a personal preference. <laughs> and until next time, I hope you guys have a very nice day and I'll see you later. All right, y'all, this is the part where I show you what I'm giving away. Starting off with this lovely mold. I use this mold, you guys see this a lot. Whether you're a beginner or if you're someone on my level, this is always a great mold to start off with or to have laying around. I use two of them. I just love the shape. I think they're the great height. They're not too wide. I love just how easy it is to use this mold. So. I am going to be giving this mold away as one of the things. I've got some micas here. These micas are from Soapbox uh, Micas. Yep. Terry over at Soapbox Micas sent me a whole bunch of different colored micas and I really tried to get some more of them to throw into this kit but it didn't happen this time. <laughs> so I have some peacock mica and some iris mica. I've really enjoyed using these different colors from this company so if you guys haven't tried them yet or if you don't have micas laying around I'm going to throw these guys in there and you can try them yourselves. I also have some other additives here. I looked around at like my supplies and thought what are some of my favorite go-to ingredients that would be great for beginners or for people who already make soap. I'm trying to make this as friendly as possible for if whether you're immediate or advanced or a beginner and maybe you're just thinking about making soap, these are some really nice ingredients to get started off with or just have laying around for any inspiration that pops up. I have some chamomile, chamomile, it's always a word that I I don't know which way to go with it, chamomile, chamomile, I know I've asked you how do you guys say it, I still struggle with which one I like most, <laughs> but some chamomile flowers, they smell really, really nicely, like really good, I was so surprised when I opened the bag of those. Calendula petals, um, I love that word, calendula. These look great inside or on top of soap. They're one of the very few botanicals, botanicals that stay true to color in any process of soap. They will look as nice as they did going in and coming out. I have some, this is Eastern Cedar Powder. I can never, like, I just wanna say whatever comes. Eastern Red Cedar Powder from Patrick over at Soapy Oaks Farm. He makes this himself on his farm and sells it on his website. So I've included a little baggie of that for you guys to try. Lavender petals, I feel, or lavender buds, flowers. I feel like this is just something every soap maker should have laying around. These look great on top of soap. Some of these you can put inside of soap. So nice little handful of all natural botanicals for any type of soap that comes to mind. In this funny looking bag here, I have some kale and clay. I put this in all of my soaps, all of my recipes. I have these giant bags of kale and clay from Bramble Berry, and so I've just 
divvied up some of that into there for you guys to try in your recipe. And then I have this spirulina powder. This is just the nastiest smelling stuff, guys. I'm gonna be honest with you. It is the most fishy, algae, green smelling stuff ever, but I promise you, if you put it in soap, it makes a really natural colorant and it's a green algae vegetation thing. <laughs> That's as far as I can go on that one. Um, it, yeah, it is actually algae, and if you put it in soap, I'm sure there's some kind of benefits to it, but I won't ramble them off here because I don't make claims to that stuff. Do some research, um, great natural colorant, and other such things. Here's the showstopper. This book. This book I got because it is the newest book by Anne Marie. She is the owner or CEO of Brambleberry. You guys might see a lot of Soap Queen stuff laying around. A lot of the ingredients that I get are from Brambleberry. They just came out with this new book. I have sat down and gone through every single page of this book and read all of the different recipes and I think it's absolutely fabulous. Um, Emery and Soap Queen, they have a blog, they have a YouTube channel. There is a website with a library of recipes and tutorials. So if you guys need some inspiration, go head over there. This is not endorsed by Brambleberry whatsoever. I just thought this was nice for somebody who needed help be beginning with the soap making process or if someone as advanced as I am needed some inspiration or freshen it up a little bit. <laughs> but it is all milk. It is everything in this, re in this book has nothing but milk recipes in it. Um, and it, there's even like vegan in inspired recipes in here so in case you don't believe in putting milk in your soaps um, you can make your own like let's open it up and just give you a little sneak peek you can get this on Brambleberry's website you can get this on Amazon or if you're lucky you can win it from me <laughs> so let's see what's inside of here oh milk again all about milk the properties why soap with milk and the different kinds of milks you can use if you wanted to make your own milks out of nuts grains seeds so on it gives you instructions and some beautiful pictures and step by steps on how to do that yourself it goes through like the science of soap making and the process it tells you what equipment you need. You guys, a lot of my equipment I get off of Amazon. The majority of it I go to like the Dollar General or the Dollar Store. I usually leave links if I do go off of Amazon. You don't have to get fancy pantsy with the stuff. If you want to make your own molds, they show you how to do it out of like the actual container, like the almond milk or the sour cream. If you have Pringles can laying around, if you're just making soaps for you and your family and your friends, there's no need to go and buy all of these fancy molds. But they, but you can, they're available on uh, Brambleberry's website. It goes through the first aid, so important, and the safety of lye. You guys, lye is very caustic, very dangerous. When you first mix it up, it gets extremely hot like it can burn your skin even when it's cooled off it causes irritation so you, unless you're putting it inside a soap and it's gone through the process you have to just be mindful of lye and the safety precautions like that you need to know before you start soap making and it goes through that um, what else is in here oh there's a basic recipe for beginners, if you've never made soap before, this is a great recipe to start off with. Um, I think it goes through all the different oils, yep, different oils and the properties of all the different oils you can use. Cocoa butter, canola, palm, olive oil, macadamia, jojoba, like there are so many different oils that you can make a recipe using any of this combination. So that's fun. Going through colors and scents. Whether you want to use micas or you want to use all natural colorants, if you wanted to use fragrance oils or if you want to use essential oils, it gives you an idea of a good substitution for each one of those things. So if you want to make an all natural soap, it tells you how to do that as well. Um, and the different colors and all the milks turn, your soap, adding exfoliants, and then it goes into your, your recipes. So whether you are someone 
who's never made soap before or if it's if you're someone who it doesn't have too many recipes under your belt. This goes through beginner, it goes through intermediate, it goes through advanced, so the better you get at soap making or farther along you go in your soap making journey, the more recipes that are available to you. It also goes through, like if you were to use milk, because that's all this, the yogurt, there's all kinds of different milks, milks in here, it tells you the amount that you're going to add to your soap whether you're replacing your water solution at 100% or if you're only adding 30% of, of your solution of milk in at trace. How many bars it makes. I mean, this is such an informative step-by-step -step book. And I don't know about you guys, but when I have a cookbook, I need pictures. I need clear, precise directions and I have to have pictures. And I feel like Brambleberry so queen, whatever. <laughs> they always do a magnificent job of just clear, precise, informative, beautiful, put together tutorials. So that's exactly what is in this book. So again, if you're a beginner, this is a really great book to have. All the different milks that are in here. Look, there's some calendula petals. <laughs> they might come in handy. Um, coconut milk, goat milk, donkey milk, soy milk, sour cream, almond, buttermilk, you name it, it is all in here. Look at that. Those colors look familiar. I think those would make a very pretty soap. Maybe that one right there. So you guys, I hope that you guys like this little giveaway that I'm doing. I love this book in all honesty. I can't wait to even try some of the recipes for myself. A little sneak peek on my thought about, you know, if you want to, are thinking about buying this book and this is what's inside of it and what I can tell you my thoughts are on it um, look at that that's really cool I've made a soap like that mm -hmm. yep cut it right down diagonal yep 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 so yeah I hope you guys are interested in winning this and the mold and all these little ingredients here I'm going to be using um, raffle copter and I'll leave the link down below you can have more than one entry and it'll show you how you can add up your entries and more chances to win you're also going to be getting some of my soaps of course I couldn't give you know something away and not throw some of my soaps in there you'll probably get a bar of the gumball machine and a surprise bar in there who knows what I'll decide to throw in there so you'll get all of this and more so follow the directions down below Thank you guys so much for following me on YouTube, for the encouragement and the comments and the inspiration, and I just couldn't have done it without you. So this, you are the reason why I am still on YouTube and I continue to make soapy videos and other such things. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I just love getting back to you guys in any way that I can. Stay tuned, more soap making videos and possible giveaways in the future, lots of fun new things that I'm trying to expand my business with. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you guys enjoyed it, please give me a big thumbs up. New to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, you know the spiel, questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section down below. And until next time, I hope you guys have a very nice day, and good luck to all that enter. And oh, look at that one, <laughs> and I'll smell you later.